Yeah, I saw a red light over there. Oh! oh. I, I hope it's in focus, because I don't want people to say that the images were out of focus. So, anyway, if, when you, if you guys want to trade in rumors and speculation, uh, you can do that online on our official Robotech Facebook page, facebook.com slash Robotech, and twitter.com slash Robotech News. So, thank you very much. Um, if you visit the Toynami Robotech exhibit, that's where you can get that uh, Man Cross exclusive uh, available here during Comic Con. The Robotech X Fan Club, you can see the documentary again. Now, for folks who are leaving, this is wonderful because they're improving the odds for the folks that are left in line. Uh, everyone who answers a very, asks a very good question will also get a very good prize. Steve will here will be the judge. Uh, if he thinks your question rules, then you will get a prize of rules. And um, actually, um, since we have this wonderful resource here, we've also got Ms. Uh, Svea Stouch basic here. Uh, feel free to uh, direct questions to her. And uh, thank you so very much. Um, Steve, do you want to take over? Go ahead. First off, I want to say thank you very much for joining Mrs. Basic. Glad to have you here. Questions in uh, general. Um, I have like, a complete set of all the Robotech movies and, and the Shadow Chronicles, but I want to be able to go into some of the more the Japanese um, Robotech uh, movies and, uh, and the television show that was released in Japan. Japan. I wanted to know where can you get those um, those those, those, uh, those movies? Uh, the original Japanese uh, with with the uh, Japanese uh, the, the voices and everything. Uh, actually, you can get. Uh uh, Macross, uh, Super Dimension Fortress Macross, Southern Cross, and Mosquito. They're all available from AD Vision, and they have uh, the original Japanese, and they have the subtitles. Uh, and I think in Macross specifically, they got some of the, uh, their uh, popular voice actors, uh, such as Big Vignana and uh, Breggers and so on, uh, doing uh, English tracks if you want to hear it that way as well. So, uh, and the stories are subtly different in very important places, so uh, it's definitely worth watching if you've already watched Robotech. Yes, thank you very much. Also, I'd like to add that uh, Mari Ijima, who played Min Min in the original Japanese, is living in Los Angeles, and it just so turned out that they were able to get her to play Min Min in the English track as well. So, I, we thought it was the very first time that ever happened in anime, but apparently it's the second time it's ever happened in anime, but yeah. The first big star, I would say. <laughs> so, thank you. So, pick anything you want from here since you're the first. <laughs> you can go ahead with the next question. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm uh, curious as into uh, when you might be releasing the second Shadow Chronicle series. The second, uh, the continuation to Shadow Chronicles, we announced the title as being uh, Robotech Shadow Rising. Uh, that's a very ambitious project. Uh, one of the things uh, about that project is it was announced prior to the announcement of the live action movie. We're not going to kid ourselves. Uh, we had a you know 200 pound gorilla, but then along came the 800 pound gorilla, and it's going to be a very expensive project. And uh, the uh, producers of the series felt that. Uh, and they're just being very frank about this. If they ride the coattails of the marketing of a live action movie, it's going to reach a, reach a much wider audience. Uh, this is also why we're working on this other project in the meantime, is we know fans don't want to wait forever, so that's why we're working on more tech. Uh, my question is, for your Robotech comics, um, are you thinking about doing digital comics? It's something we're uh, investigating. It's, uh, it's very, uh, with new products like the iPad, uh, that's uh, very enticing because you can have digital comics that are not just static, you can have animation. It kind of blurs the line uh, above what the media can do, but uh, we haven't announced anything yet, but you know, maybe this time next year. Uh, okay, actually, I want to cheat the line a little bit. How many of you guys in the line have a question for this basic? All right, you go. Come on, right up. Uh, Ms. Masek, I was wondering if you were able to bring to the, uh, any surprises that Mr. Masek was working on 
that nobody was really ready for, or that something that even he was working on, uh, but you know, maybe he was working on it kind of on, on the side. He had it like, announced to the team. In reference to Robotech or other projects? Uh, I was mainly thinking Robotech, but uh, if nothing comes to mind. <laughs> It's about, it's about how the, uh, it was once the uh, Robotech Masters Republic, the Trollian Republic, being uh, a coup d'etat from within, becoming the Trollian Empire. And when they saw Star Wars Episode Two, they were like, what? Yes. They stole our idea. So uh, if, if you're real big fans of Star Wars and you're fans of Legend of Zor, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. They felt like uh, their idea, they, they saw it on the big screen, but uh, uh, that's actually a really good part of the universe, and that's something that I think they adapted pretty well. There were little bit bits of uh, Carl's ideas that were not in there, which I think might be good to add later, but uh, we haven't gotten that far yet. I, I think it's uh, very fertile ground uh, that we could explore in the future. Okay, I'm on, uh, we're on a roll with the comics. Um, we know that Wildstorm's doing the more recent stuff but the stuff from like Antarctic Press and Academy haven't been available for years. Um, what's the status on doing trades or like those big black and white phone books because those are really hard to find for most of the bands? You know, the thing about those uh, omnibus editions is um, we're kind of being a little bit choosy right now, deliberately, uh, because we're going after the ones that we think will sell the most because it, that does go into a niche crowd because uh, I'm not, just being very honest here, some of those later Antarctic issues may be sold tops, 1100 units. And so we've got a market that's about this big versus, you know, the Wildstorm uh, releases, you know, sold many more or magnitude more. So I think just for prioritization, they're going to go with the Wildstorm material first, uh, and then they'll work on some of the more obscure stuff later. Who has a question for Ms. Masick? <laughs> 